What a year. As 2022 draws to a close, I'm pleased to announce that despite a year of potential Milsim development, several prime ministers down the line, Project Reality is still the best realism shooter on the market. Before we get stuck in to the standout positives PR has to offer that remain unmatched, let's take a look at the fresh competition. Battlefield 3 Reality mod came out this year. A hotly anticipated mod backed by some dedicated devs built off the back of Battlefield 3, a game many people already owned and a famously strong engine that at least graphically has withstood the test of time. Having played the pre-alpha in organized playtests, myself and many other YouTubers felt this game was the best thing to happen to realism shooters, at least for this year. And yet, when the game is launched, it feels completely different. And today there are so few players, it's difficult to fill even one server. I made a detailed video about Reality Mod a few months ago, largely citing faults in player quality as what was fundamentally flawed with this game. I felt this way because of how different the game felt when it was being played by tryhards who focused on a more teamwork oriented way of playing in the playtests versus how the game is currently played today. But looking back, I think this does the players a disservice and isn't necessarily the full picture. The reality is that the game still feels far closer to Battlefield 3 than to a reality mod. And a mainstream audience have clearly noticed this and opted to play the game like a Battlefield game, not like a Milsim. I still think this game can be saved, but honestly, development really needs to ramp up. It's been some time since launch and to find that changes you'd been hoping for, like more vehicles, more content in general, is still so far off, is really demoralizing. I still have high hopes for reality mod and have my fingers crossed for 2023. <laughs> Beyond the Wire, the World War I realism shooter developed and promoted by the same studio behind Squad received a full release this year. Unfortunately, despite some promising marketing, the game leaves a lot to be desired. The biggest issue with this game is the players, or lack of them. Wow, you're hard pressed to find even 20 people playing this game, which is definitely an issue for a game that's 50 versus 50 and multiplayer only. Weirdly, it's quite hard to say exactly why no one plays this game. It has content. It feels pretty polished and free from general new release jank and looks pretty good. I mean, maybe people have lost their appetite for World War One shooters. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure on this one and I'm genuinely curious as to why so few people play this game. For me, I've always felt that World War One shooters in general tend to miss the point. The whole thing with World War One was that there were long stalemates where action was restricted to uh, holding a line. It was less about action and more about endurance. Most World War I shooters opt to ignore this and tend to take World War I elements they like, such as era-specific weapons, vehicles, and excessive mud with some trenches thrown in, but fighting is constant. There's no sense of waves of enemies or calm before the storm. It's all attack and action. I think a World War I FPS with a similar model to Planet Side where you pick a faction and have to hold trenches across a large map that is persistent, where rounds last weeks and players drop in and out to help hold the line is a much better approach. Game devs, hear my cry. We also had Armor Reforger come out this year, but unfortunately that was just a tech demo. Beyond the newbies, we've also had a few oldies like Squad and Hell Let Loose, both of which received major updates this year. Whoa! In both cases, these updates dramatically improved the quality of these games and helped breathe fresh life into what may have been considered stale old releases. And yet, neither of these are able to capture the magic PR continues to offer, despite Project Reality's distinct lack of major updates. So why is PR still so good? First and foremost, Project Reality just has so much content. In PR, there are 28 unique factions. 68 unique maps, each of which has at least one alternate layer, and an assortment of APCs, tanks, jets, attack helicopters, and forklifts. Okay, there's only one type of forklift, but still pretty great. As a PR player, you honestly take this choice for granted. Try finding any game on the market with 68 maps or 28 factions. I'm not sure a comparable game exists. The fact that this entire experience is also completely free and can be run on any PC built in the last 100 years is honestly very impressive. Squad by comparison costs money and the rig you'll need to buy to play it costs even more money. 
For this financial sacrifice, the game only has nine unique factions, 25 maps, and a smaller selection of APCs and tanks, with no flyable jets, and only one attack helicopter, which the devs admitted they added in accidentally. Of course, there's an argument to be made for quality over quantity, and I will attest that a lot of Project Reality maps feel a little barren, and often offer up a similar gameplay experience, despite being different maps. In addition to this, the fact that a number of these maps are from the Vietnam or World War II expansions, which are, in my opinion, some of the worst parts of PR, do make that vast quantity of maps look a little less vast. Nevertheless, PR's variety and depth of content is noticeable. You can honestly go days without playing the same map twice. There's also so much to master. Done with infantry, there are APCs and tanks on at least 20 factions to get to grips with. Done that, maybe it's time to learn to fly CAS helicopters. Done that, maybe it's time to master jets. This alone provides literally years of replayability while simultaneously offering up a gameplay experience that doesn't readily get old or stale. In Squad, for example, I've often found that even when playing with a group of top tier squad operators, that the game quickly becomes repetitive as it doesn't take long to play all the good maps several times or use all the vehicles several times. But there's more to games than content, which is a weird thing to say considering on the surface all games can really offer is more and more content. The thing is, once I started playing Project Reality, I didn't keep coming back because of the content. I came back because of the players. It's no secret that PR's active player base is considerably smaller than that of many of its competitors. In a modern gaming environment, any gaming news site will like to make you think that player counts are everything, and any game boasting a low player count is a sign that the game is dying or not worth playing. Now there's a limited truth to this. If you're playing a multiplayer game and no one else is playing it, then the game is unplayable as you need other players to play the game, as is the issue faced by Beyond the Wire. However, PR can still consistently fill two to three servers daily which is more than enough to regularly play the game without issue. There's obviously a player gap with PR versus other popular realism shooters when it comes to quantity, with PR players heavily outnumbered. However, player quality in PR is just unmatched. In Squad, for example, you'll find a hefty dose of casuals, players who enjoy the game and know what they're doing, but they just pick it up every now and then to kill a few hours. They're not particularly invested in communication or teamwork, and while they'll participate in the squad, they'll largely be looking to run around and shoot people in an attempt to enjoy squads, modern shooter mechanics. And I'm not trashing these players. It's a perfectly valid way to play the game and will often contribute to a team's win. But these players don't make you want to come back. In a weird way, Project Reality is like a local club or a group hobby you keep coming back to. As the player base is smaller, you will regularly find yourself playing with the same players. If you do infantry every round, you'll end up meeting like-minded individuals who also do infantry every round. Exclusively a tank crewman, you'll get to know all the other asset whores very well. This genuinely creates a sense of community. Playing PR, while your goal is always to win the round, a round often feels like it's not really about the destination, but about the friends you made along the way. It sounds really dumb, but playing PR is genuinely a great way to make online friends. I, for one, was drawn to the game initially because it was a place where I could repeatedly socialize with people like me while being a loser degenerate hiding from the world in my parents' attic. Larger games just don't seem to be able to offer you this same community. In other games, you can play on the same servers and exclusively do infantry, but you'll regularly be playing with players you've never seen before and will likely never see again. Of course, you can go out of your way to join a clan and actively work to build a community to play with, but without these players online, you'll find your gaming experience noticeably shallow. And that's really where PR clutches it out for me. The game just has so much depth. So many games these days look so good on the surface, but have very little to offer beyond the first 10 to 20 hours of gameplay. I've been playing PR for literally years, and I'm still doing new things, which is actually crazy to think about. Now, do I think it's a good thing that this is still the best realism shooter in 2022? I'm a little divided. PR still being good is great, but the fact that no one seems able to offer anything better, even with new engines and fresh graphics, I feel speaks pretty poorly for the Milsim genre as a whole at the moment. I feel it's in dire need of a shakeup. In any case, if you're a regular PR player, please do back me up in the comments because I fear PR haters may be out for blood on this one. Other than that, all the best, and I hope to see you in the next one.
You get close up, close up, grenade shot. They are not gonna. Brother, brother. <laughs>